We're just getting this as it's just been announced. Yes. So what can you tell us? We don't know anything. We don't know anything. Well, our little okay. Here. Well, let's we let's little start. Yeah. Let's start with with Aaron. Um, first of all, if you haven't heard to his po heard his podcast, please start listening. Um, and how many hours should they are they going to be dedicating? Well, there's 44 episodes. But they're about a half an hour. Roughly a half an hour or so. It's know, not that bad. You can jump in, and if you have no children and no life, you can binge for a weekend and you're done, right? Um, but not in the dark, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, hear that a lot. Look, I am a huge fan of, of nonfiction. If you were to go and see what's on my bookshelves, it's nonfiction. But it's also in the horror genre, whether it's biographies of people like Mary Wollstonecroft or, I mean, you know, you name it. Um, and when I found out about the podcast and started listening, I was like, oh my God, this is a dream come true. And the idea of being able to bring the true scary stories, because they are real, to life and understand where these great mythologies came from uh, is fascinating. And to do it in the alternative reality space is fascinating. Yeah, I actually had just been introduced to the podcast, I guess, like a month and a half ago by a friend because I'd been talking about cannibalism of all things. And he was like, yeah, well, there's this really great podcast that you probably really like called Lore. Um, so how is it like translating these podcasts into an actual like serialized TV show? And, it's not serialized. Or not serialized. It's but anthological. Like, uh, the antho an yes, antho an anthology. anthology. Yeah. <laughs> But what's it like doing that? Well, you know, there's limitations to audio, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you can't see some of the things. There, There's ups and downs to either medium. And what, what I love about video is it allows us to have one more level of richness and depth to the stories. So people can see things playing out on the screen. And uh, there'll still be the element of my voice in there. Yeah, so we have narration. Together. We'll yeah. have histor historical mixed media. Mm -hmm. And we'll have some, some reenactments because always these, these are stories about characters in the worlds that they're in, yeah. and we have different different means, visual means, to bring those to life, as well as listening to him tell the stories. Right. Um, and as you may have seen in the release, um, first person to join us is Glenn Morgan, uh, who uh, created Intruders, um, you know, is known for Final Destination, and interestingly enough, uh, his favorite episode of X-Files. That's right. I mean, if, if you've ever watched the X-Files early on, there's the character of Eugene Toombs, you know, the guy who can stretch through. He's a creation of Glenn Morgan. Um, Glenn created and wrote Home, which is my favorite episode. Mm -hmm. And he's a fan of the show and we've had a great friendship reached ever since he reached out to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, his show has been on the air since March uh, Last 2015 year. and has grown to 3.2 million listeners. Um, but he was one of the early adopters. Yeah, absolutely. So before this even became, you know, a TV series, Glenn was already in your life. Yeah. <laughs> um, what made you create the podcast and find these stories? Where, how are you drawn to these kind of story time? You know, I've been drawn to tales of the supernatural since I was a kid. Probably fifth grade, writing assignments in October, like now. Um, the teacher wanted us to write a short story for penmanship, you know, just I always heard chicken scratch when I was growing up and so we had to work on a penmanship and I chose to write about a, a haunted graveyard where they were now selling pumpkins and the pumpkins had bones in them. You know, it was a kid's story. I was in fifth grade, but I've always loved it ever since. The X-Files fed that when I was in college. Um, and I was writing uh, supernatural novels for a while, and a lot of the research material just never made it into the books, so I filed it all away. And there's some great stuff in there, things I wanted to share with people, things that really happened. And uh, it, through a series of unfortunate events, it turned into a podcast, and fortunate events, I suppose. And here we are, yeah. I mean, it, I, there was literally a moment, you, know, you hear about these, where the file was being hovered over the trash can, right? Where I, I almost threw it away, and instead, I tried audio. Here I am. You know, and, and he's been doing this as a one-man band. You know, so you know, people say, oh, you know, entrepreneurship. Well, this is entrepreneurship at his best, where he's done it all himself, from the, you know, from the researching to the writing to the recording to the making all the deals, etc. I mean, it's unbelievable, and you know, shows that shows that you know, this is something that we can we can do, we can aspire to. Yeah. And. I'm sure that, you know, as you said, you almost didn't. I didn't. I Thank almost God didn't. Thank you did. Yeah. I know. It's amazing. I want to hear about the process of coming up with the stories, where you find them and how you research them and kind of 
make sure that they are legit. Yeah, so I have a writer who's locked in a closet and I <laughs> knock on the door. Sure. No, you know, um, I do a lot of reading and there are topics that I have on a list, things that I've thought up, things that I've always been interested in. And oftentimes in researching one of those topics, I'll bump into something else that I will kind of push off onto the list to research later. And I find a lot of great things that way. But, you know, we live in a, an amazing time with, I mean, the internet makes things really accessible. I can go visit a place in Scotland right now with Google Maps that I wouldn't be able to see unless I flew there and drove to that spot 20 years ago. You know, I had a conversation with Glenn Morgan, our showrunner, um, about how he was researching the X-Files in the early 90s and how he had to drive to the, the library in town and open up medical journals and read through them like a caveman, you know? And, <laughs> and now I can go on to, you know, library search engines and read books and search books for stories that I'm looking for or characters I'm looking for. So it's, it's made it a little bit easier. Um, but there still is an intuition aspect to it. I still have to read the story and say, is this right? Is this the one? Like, do I tell this one or not? So that has to pass through a filter in my head. Have there been any that you really, really, really wanted to be real? Yeah. And they just weren't? And, or, or there's just no story there. Sure. You know, I say no to a lot. It was it Steve Jobs who said, you know, Apple says yes to one out of a hundred things and no to everything else. You know, I, I have to say no to a lot of things. Um, he said no to all the things that I've sent him. <laughs> and, and worse yet, it's like, well, I already know about that. And I keep thinking, no, this one is so obscure, he won't know about it. You're sending like, me things? What? I, I didn't know this. Very funny. I didn't know, seriously. We'll, we'll talk offline. <laughs> I've never heard. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Well, how did you choose the story? I must have an old email address. <laughs> How do, you, how do you choose the stories that were chosen to actually make for the show? We're still in that process. You're still, yeah. You still haven't yeah. chosen those. I mean, it's yeah. like picking which of your kids is your favorite, right? It's hard. But there is a, there's yeah. a kid. Yeah. I, I'm an only uh, child. I, yeah, and I have an only child, so thank God. <laughs> um, uh, you know, Glenn literally just joined us. So it's going to be it's going to be a communi communal process. Yeah. Um, and we're also going to bring on someone from the documentary world mm -hmm. um, because that is going to that that component is so important because we are in the unscripted alternative side um, this is truth and we, we want to do something that hasn't been seen on on well in this case streaming or yeah. TV before yeah were there any stories when you were doing the podcast that you wanted to do but just didn't necessarily work in only audio format that you're excited to explore now? I don't know that I've bumped into anything like that yet. I mean, that's the that's the power of story to some degree is that it works on the page, it works in the ear, and it works in your eyes, and it works in different ways in each in each format. How's that for a non-answer? Yeah, how about <laughs> anything you're excited to expand on that there's more you could tell if you had a visual format? A lot of the stories could benefit from. He doesn't want to lock us into <laughs> yeah. something and then have, have you say, you said back in Comic Con, you really want to expand this, and it's not one of the ten. Yeah, I'm excited about a lot of things. It's 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 fun. Thank you. Thank you so, Thank you so much. much.